everyone, Helen here with your latest natural sciences lesson. Welcome grade sevens. What are we going to be looking at today? Well, of course, it's still associated with the periodic table, but our topic of focus today is elements in everyday life. So we need to understand that as we're learning about science and chemistry, we need to understand that this isn't a subject that belongs in a laboratory and you have to wear a white coat and glasses in order to understand it. Science is in your everyday life. We've been learning quite a bit about the different elements and looking at the periodic table. Now let's see if we can find these elements in our everyday lives. Let's be aware of products and things that we use around us that have elements in them. So if we're looking at our different examples around us at home and at work, at school, most elements are not found in their pure state in nature. Most materials we find in our everyday lives consist of the elements, but not just the element by itself. They're found in mixtures. For example, metal alloys. So an alloy is a mixture of different metals put together. The two metals don't chemically combine with each other, but it's a mixture of solid uh, physical entities, two different kinds of metal that have been mixed together, or they're found chemically bound to other elements in different compounds. So when we explore things in our everyday lives, we're going to find that there's very little that we find in terms of pure elements. So many of your soaps and products that you use to get clean, whether it's your own body or to clean your house, the most abundant or the most common element in that product is in fact not just one element, but a compound. Because most of our substances that we see around us in everyday lives are made as a solution in water. And we know that water is a compound made up of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. So whilst the hydrogen is an element and the oxygen is an element, in our everyday life, we very rarely find hydrogen by itself and oxygen by itself. It's usually combined together into water. So. Let's be aware of that when we start looking around us at the different elements. Let's explore some of the things that you may find at home and in your everyday lives. We're going to start with our element called carbon, which has an element symbol, capital C. Now, carbon is a very interesting element because it exists in different forms called allotropes. So allotropes are when a particular element can look like different substances. So if you think of diamonds, we know that they are hard, shiny, and very beautiful stones that cost a lot of money. But what about this substance in your pencil that is known as graphite and it is also carbon it's just carbon without the fancy clothes on so diamond and graphite are both two crystalline forms of carbon but the one is very hard and the other one is very soft and graphite slides off the tip of our pencil into layers of graphite which get left behind on the paper. But we also know that there's a non-crystalline form of carbon and that is charcoal or coal and that certainly isn't shiny. It's not very hard 
and it's more powdery if we try and crush it. So carbon is a very interesting element. But for us, it's extremely interesting in that it is the molecule that is the basis for all, sorry, it is the element that is the basis for all organic molecules. So all carbohydrates and proteins and fats, everything that we discover in making up a living organism, a body like our own, carbon is the basis for it. Moving on to our next example, and that is nickel. You might be very familiar with nickel. Nickel is very strong, it's shiny, it resists corrosion, so it doesn't rust or corrode very easily, and it joins in mixtures with other elements, such as iron, for example, to make the alloy we know as stainless steel. So we can see in our pots that we have, made up out of nickel and iron or stainless steel, we can see that we've got a very strong pot. It's lovely and shiny and we're going to use it every day and we're going to put liquids into it. It's not going to corrode very easily. Many of our coins that we have in our purses and wallets are also examples of nickel alloys. They've got nickel in them and the nickel makes the coin so strong you can't really bend your five rand coin and break it in half because of the nickel content but nickel's got a downside as well sometimes nickel is used to plate over other metals to make jewelry sometimes the jewelry is cheaper because it's nickel plated but the nickel can be um, irritant, an irritant. It can make us feel allergic to that metal. So if you have a ring or a necklace that starts to make you itch, then you know that it's got nickel in it because humans can be allergic to nickel. Argon is a colorless, odorless gas. It's the third most abundant gas in our atmosphere and every time you breathe in you're breathing in a whole lot of argon but when you breathe it out the same amount of argon comes out because we don't use the argon but it's there all around us the interesting property about argon is it's inert it doesn't react much with any other of the elements and so we can put it inside light bulbs and that means that whatever reaction is happening in the light bulb, it's not going to explode. It's not the metal inside that light bulb when it gets hot. It's not going to react with oxygen, for example, and burn and explode. And we're looking at this substance that makes up the filament inside the light bulb and it's Tungsten. So we've got two elements that like to go together. Tungsten is very hard. It is brittle. So if you dropped a piece of tungsten on the floor, it may shatter. It has a very high melting point and it's very tensile. If you stretch it, it's not going to tear easily or break easily. Now tungsten also makes wonderful alloys to make very, very strong metals. This is an alloy, tungsten carbide, tungsten with carbon, and it makes extremely strong drill points or drill bits and saws that can work through metal and not be uh, eaten away or worn down. Now, in terms of the light bulb, this filament inside the light bulb is made of tungsten. Because it's very high melting point property, it can have great heat going through it and it can allow us to experience light and it won't melt. And because the inside of the light bulb is filled with argon, that enormous heat 
that is going through the tungsten with the electricity is not going to react and blow up. What about copper? You're quite familiar with copper. Copper has the symbol CU and it is a very ductile metal which means that we can pull it into long threads to make electrical wires. We can also make alloys which are mixtures. An alloy of copper with tin makes a substance called brass, a uh, bronze, and an alloy of copper with zinc makes brass. And these are shiny uh, copper colored implements that you might find around your house. Aluminium is very common. It's a soft, malleable metal. Malleable, remember, we can hammer it into thin sheets. It's easy to work with. It's non-corrosive, so it won't rust. And it's lightweight. It is our most abundant metal that we find in the Earth's crust. And you're familiar with it as aluminium foil. Remember, it's aluminium foil. It's not, in fact, tin foil, although that is our common name for it. You're familiar with aluminium making up your cold drink cans, and you know that you can crush the cold drink can and that the metal outside of the cold drink can is very, very thin. It's been hammered extremely thin. And the fuselage or the outside shell of an aeroplane is also made up of a lot of lightweight aluminium so that the aeroplane isn't very heavy and yet it is strong. Here is your homework, your ingredient list challenge. You're going to go through your cupboards at home. Maybe you're going to go through your bathroom cupboards or your kitchen cupboards maybe you've got a cupboard in your garage where all your gardening and car things are kept you're going to select some interesting products that you find in your house you're going to read the product information on the label and see if you can identify some elements or compounds that remember contain groups of elements that have been bonded together and make a list so let's have a look. We've examined this substance before. Hydrochloric acid in uh, products that help to keep our pool nice and clean. We know that hydrochloric acid has hydrogen in it and chlorine in it. So this is an example of a compound made up of two elements hydrogen and chlorine and when you are reading your element list don't worry or your, your ingredient list don't worry if you see hydrochloric acid look at the name and you will see that you've actually can identify the hydrogen part and you can identify the chlorine part and together they make up hydrochloric acid Sometimes these products will be clearly labeled potassium fertilizers, nitrogen fertilizers, phosphorus fertilizers, but other products you're going to have to examine those labels very carefully. For example, some of your soaps that you might use to wash yourself or wash your hair, shampoos, have something called sodium sulfates in them. And sodium sulfates have got the sodium and it's got the sulfur, and it's also got some oxygen. Now, you might not have recognized that something called a sulfate has oxygen in it as well as sulfur, but you should have recognized the word sulfur and sodium as well. So have some fun trying to make yourself very much aware of elements that you use in your everyday lives. Take your list and make your list and I'm sure you're going to find it interesting as to what elements you discover all around you. That's it for today from Natural Sciences and me, Helen, but I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.